So Diana, picking up from where we were in part one of our talk together, you talked about that term you use in the book. And I've got a, a friend, a friend, Tom Ziegler, which a lot of people know, uh, who's reading it. And he really liked that term of a resonator of being right. that for each other. But you ended off really the last show talking about it's not just giving uh, advice, being that resonator is, and you use the term, we are hardwired for connection. And I thought about that and I'm going to, I am going to pull the guy card a little bit. I I tend to come from a man's perspective and in dealing with men and I'm going to stereotype them that I think a lot of times they, we don't feel like we need that. And yet just this morning I had a guy and I realized I kind of tuned in. He was sharing stuff. He just wanted me to commiserate with him a little bit. Didn't want me to fix anything. Didn't even want sympathy or empathy or support. I think he was a little bit looking for me just to reassure him that he wasn't nuts. (laughs) <laughs> that's exactly what a resonator does right remember that okay. the concept of a resonator uh is like the body of the guitar or violin the body of a piano uh, yeah it takes that original sound that gentle soft sound that the string makes and it just amplifies it and so we do that for one another when we simply are present to one another right so we learn to ask better questions right yeah. We learn to say, well, tell me more about that. Or could you give me an example? Or I'm I'm not sure I'm tracking. Could you could you say that again and help me understand that better? Right. And often we think we're being resonators when we say things like, oh, I've been there. Hmm. But often that's an anti-resonator move, you know, because our circumstances are never going to be exactly the same as someone else's. And so that shifts the focus. Someone says, I'm having a hard time with this. And we say, oh yeah, last time I tried that, this whole whole thing, you know, and it's like, all of a sudden we've taken over. We're not amplifying what we hear from that other person's soul. So learning to be better listeners, yeah, cultivating curiosity, and then helping to feed back what I hear you saying is, or um, is this is this kind of what you're getting at, or do I understand correctly, or would this apply in that situation the way it did in in this? Um, and that's how we resonate as creative people, as productive people. We also need people who will resonate with ideas. So you're talking about a situation where a friend or a colleague just needs somebody to be there and hear things are hard, or I'm struggling with this, but we also just need people to bounce ideas off of, right? So we say, well, I've got an idea for a new business. I've got an idea for a new collaborative project. I've got an idea for a new novel. And just to ask questions, really tell me about that. And we find because we are in fact hardwired for connection, that we're able to articulate these ideas more precisely and more completely when we're actually face to face with another person. So the neuroscience of it is pretty complicated, but to simplify it down to its basics, when we're face to face with another person, more of our brain is online, it's it's accessible. So when you're sitting by yourself, maybe with a notepad and some paper or whatever, trying to work out an idea, certain amount of your awareness, your intellect, your energy is accessible to devote toward that project. However, if we were to be able to look inside how our brains work, when we're eye to eye, face to face, and when we're trying to actually translate this for an actual person, all of a sudden there's more of our brain available, literally. Um, We are hardwired this way and we know it primarily from studies of infants. How do babies learn to speak? How do babies learn to do the things that they do? Our brains from infancy are designed to watch, to imitate and to grow and develop in relationship. Well, and that speaks to me, and I think it will a lot of people. I, I love the written word. I like to see the written word. And for other people, I know they can do an equal, they can get equal value from hearing auditorially. I really struggle there, and I've let that atrophy uh, as a result. And so it's the written. But in interacting with someone, 
I mean, really, Diana, here on the podcast, when I first started doing them, I did a few. Back then, I used Skype. Uh, and then I had a couple that happened via phone and realized my, I won't say lack of ability, but how much I lost by not yeah. being able to see the person. So you and I, we are not physically face to face, but I'm grateful for Zoom that I can see you real time. I can see yeah. your face and it yeah. brings so much more uh, in. And, and I know we're in a day and age, my gosh, we just came through COVID where that was people's only option. But yeah, the value of, of that though, I got to admit, and, and you know this better than I do, there's another step, maybe you can explain it, but there is another step, if possible, when possible, to actually be face to face in the same room with that person's, I don't know what you would say, their cellular energy. <laughs> Boy, I wish I knew more about it. Uh, yeah, all that I, I know is that the, um, uh, the science really supports something mm -hmm. happens when we're physically present yeah. with others. I think it has to do with our nervous system and the way that we thrive when we're around others. Um, in addition to just like face-to-face, one-on-one resonating, I also think about what happens when three or four get together and how one idea leads to another thought leads to another insight because you've got this variety of perspectives at work. I'm sure you've had this happen, Kevin, where you've kind of, you're toying with an idea, you're thinking about a problem, you get together with a couple of friends, three friends, you're sitting around, you're just kind of kicking the idea around together. And what one person says sparks something brand new absolutely in, in the other person. And then they build upon that and build upon that. And so this exponential kind of uh, well of insight begins to flow. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a really important thing that we have that. Now, saying all that, I also want to be really clear that we need time of privacy, of reflection. Some of us need to withdraw a little bit from the noisy world in order to reflect and to clarify our own thinking. And the, the balance point for each person is going to be a little bit different. Some people are going to do more, want more people time. For some people, it gets too people y, right? Yeah. And we need to kind of withdraw and recharge a little bit through reflection, maybe journaling, maybe going for walks, maybe a time of prayer, uh, whatever these things are that help to recharge us. So the challenge for all of us, I think, is to find that appropriate rhythm. I, I don't like the word balance because the balance point always feels like there's one perfect kind of um ratio that always works in all situations right but I, I don't know about your life but my life actually is not that perfectly poised uh -uh. what i like to think about are rhythms in this season for yes. this project i need to emphasize this i need to just like maintain that right and then things kind of shift a little bit different seasons of life different times of day we need to find out what is the rhythm that's working uh, for us and uh, how do we capitalize it. But in all of those deliberations, I think that we tend to pull apart too often and not rely enough on other people who can really help to pull the best out of us. And, and I think that that's the best um, de definition of a mastermind group or one of these kinds of creative circles is surrounding yourself with people who bring out the very best that you have to offer. Okay. You've used the word creative a lot during our first talk and now this, and I want to hit on that, that uh, it's easy to categorize people who are creative and who are not. I think it's also easy to say, oh, everybody is creative. I don't know that I personally align with that. I have found some people who I, I struggle to see a lot of creativity in them sure. And they may have an incredibly valuable role in their ability to, you know, administrate and to do some of the things by rote that, that need the same doing over and over. So that's great. But when you talk about creatives and we talk about, I got a couple aspects I want to ask you about on this, but I, I first want to take that and let you play with the aspect of what do you mean by creative? Because when I think about that, I'm thinking of if you are in the business of creating anything, we have a lot of business owners here who may be starting a business, a new a plumbing company. And I'm saying, if you are starting from here and creating something that does not exist, you are a creative yes. as opposed to just Leonardo da Vinci over here. 
Fair. Right. To create something is to call something into being that didn't exist before. Thank you. To call Thank something you. into being. And we, if people are shy about the word creativity because we associate it with painters and sculptors, right. maybe innovators is a better word. But you know what's really a simple way to think about it are people who are problem solvers. And some of those people who are just really great at looking at a situation and say, hey, I see the way through. Uh, we could try this and we would get unstuck. I consider that to be an important aspect of the creative process. The person who's able to say, wait a minute, we are, we're boxed in, we've got this thing, and now we need to figure out a way to get outside the box. Uh, and maybe we can solve the problem by these four steps. That to me is that creative genius uh, that I'm trying to cultivate and, and really um, show how collaboration, um, friendship and interaction can really help us with that kind of out of the box thinking. I appreciate you talking about problem solvers. We did it. We, we, it comes up consistently through Tom Ziegler. He referenced some study that was done, I believe, on goals and what really motivate people. And my broad paraphrasing of it is that they found that 80% of most people, as opposed to resonating with goals, resonate with solving a problem. Mm -hmm. Semantics somewhat, we're still saying this is something I want to achieve, change, right. progress and whatever. Right. So for you to say that to say, if you're out there and you're motivated by problem solving, you're saying that they are uh, calling something into existence that didn't exist before that's uh, right a solution that is being a creative okay so on that same note then diana in the book you talk about these men in this in, in the group of the inklings at least that had a similar interest they were all involved in authoring all involved in that aspect of creativity for the most part but they did have diverse personalities right and I want to ask you around that. So as people are out here looking at maybe joining a mastermind group or, or a group of this type of nature or creating one, I hear that talked about a lot. We want one that's only business owners. That's a common one in my circle. Uh, or we want one though, where we do have diverse businesses as well. We want the plumber. We want the artist. We want that. And speak to that a little bit, because I am more prone to gravitate towards one where we are doing fairly similar things. And while I would say, yeah, I don't want clones of me. I do want people that think differently. I okay. tend to want a common ground of interest, but sure. tell us your experience with that. Well, there's a, there's a couple of things that I think are really key here. One is to remember that if you're going to really thrive in this kind of innovative perspective that I'm talking about, you probably need more than one group. Okay. Uh, C.F. Lewis, J.R.R. Tolkien, the Inklings, they did not just meet on Thursday nights with their writing buddies. They met Tuesdays, they met throughout the week, sometimes in small groups, sometimes for um, kind of what I call project groups uh, that just assembled for the purpose of working on a particular project, sometimes just one-on-one -on -one because they needed the particular expertise of one other person. So the first thing to get away from is the idea that you're going to put all of your creative eggs in one basket, or that you're okay. going to have one group that's going to meet all of your needs. Uh, but then I think that we look at a principle that says that the ideal qualities of group members are people who are passionate about the same thing, but who come at it because they have different backgrounds, different okay. training, and different personalities. So that's the magic combination, particularly when talking about dyads or pairs of people that have been wildly successful. Um, uh, John Lennon and Paul McCartney is an uh, example that's often thrown out there that's not a literary example. Two people passionate about music, in fact, about a particular kind or style of music, and yet, very different in their background, very different in their perspective, and wildly different in their personalities. So that's what you're looking for in that ideal group. And so you have Lewis and Tolkien. Lewis is the extrovert. His background is in literary studies and philosophy, right? Uh, and he is uh, has a very dogmatic view or um, apologetics view or approach to Christianity. Then you've got Tolkien very shy, very soft-spoken, uh, very slow and methodical in the way that he works. Um, 
far more easily um, kind of shut down or intimidated, right, than his friend Lewis. But you, you probably, uh, Kevin, know people like this, right? Where let's, you have really good friends and they seem to be opposite personalities, but then they start to just pull out and balance each other. Right. And that makes new things possible. Okay, I, I do appreciate that. And it makes me think of being intentional with what is your goal. So as we are all sitting here today, we're hearing this and we're thinking, yes, I want a group of individuals to join, to come around who will help me make progress with what? That if I am looking in my, let's say my chosen business structure right now, that it's going to behoove me to be with people who are passionate around that same arena. And, and for me, I tend to grab, I tend to cash what I'm doing in the realm of influencers. That's yeah. who I tend to talk with podcasters, authors, uh, speakers, presenters, you know, people who are trying to influence people in some way. So I'm going to gather with those people who have, who come at it differently than I do to help expand that, but who have that same interest as opposed to, so I'm going to call that if I'm, I'm attract, you know, people that I'm, we're attracted to the same interest as opposed to, if I want to awaken or grow something new in myself, where I would want to go with a group of very diverse professions, let's say in this aspect, like a literal, you know, visual artist mm -hmm. and somebody over here who's in manufacturing yes. and an architect and an accountant. I mean, these are people who would go, holy smokes. I mean, that's, those are so far removed for me, right. but if that's my goal to awaken something new, then it just brings me back. Would you say to what is the specific, our need for being intentional with what we do want out of this endeavor. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, that's, that's so beautifully put. That's so beautifully explained. It excites me a lot that somebody is getting, you're getting it, Kevin, you really are. Um, I think about how the Inklings started, Lewis and Tolkien and this whole group that have become so famous for all of the things that they accomplished, Narnia, the Lord of the Rings, yeah. tape letters, mere Christianity, all the rest, you know, and I think about the way that they started. I think about how that group got rolling. We tend to think about groups needing some kind of manifesto and, you know, big launch. And the way that the Inklings got started were Lewis and Tolkien decided that they enjoyed one another's company and learned a lot from one another. And so they made a commitment to start getting together regularly for lunch, right? Smallest possible decision. And I think about how many times groups go off the deep end because they start with a big, um, audacious, ambitious vision, but they don't have the infrastructure to sustain it. And so some of the simplest things that your listeners can start doing is say, is there somebody who I always feel energized by? Is there somebody in my world who after I've been with them, I feel new ideas sparking. I feel new energy flowing. Uh, I feel like I'm looking at things from a fresh perspective. Could I make a way of getting together with that person for coffee, uh, for lunch, for a walk uh, on some kind of a regular faithful basis? And then we can kind of grow from there. Maybe not grow, maybe stay the same, but let's start with that kind of thing. Uh, so another thing that okay. your, your summary points out that I, I really like to, to emphasize or underscore is that there are different kinds of groups. And one of the things that we need to figure out is if we're feeling a lack, if all of this talk from Bandersnatch is making people think, well, I want a group. The next question I think is, what kind of group would really meet my needs, right? So I talked already about what we call an ad hoc group. And that mm -hmm. is, there's a project and I get a team of people together, it's like, let's work together on this project because all of us will do better than one of us could to try to solve this problem or launch this event or whatever it may be. Those are ad hoc groups, which by their nature are temporary around a particular activity or purpose, right? So you would say, uh, we had talked last um, broadcast about the, you know, the coffee shop owners in a little town. What if they were to get together and say, could we get together over a period of the next three months and try to figure out, could we expand a little bit our service to our community by adding entertainment? What would that look like? Is that even a good idea? How would we share or rotate that kind of activity, right? And just, could we just have an exploratory 
ad hoc group. We start to ask some questions, do a little bit of research, and then at the end of that three months, regroup. Do we disband? Do we continue in a different form? Right. Or do we continue because we need another three months to continue to see how would this be implemented in a powerful way? Or from that group of coffee shop owners, these hypothetical coffee shop owners, right. um, maybe there's just two people who are really like, wow, we're a dynamic duo. So after the three months, the group disbands, but those two say, we've really, we really are good together. We really do good work when we are collaborating. Let's the two of us kind of go off and, and work in this particular way in a long-term um, way. But um, you can talk about things like mastermind groups and, and you're, the, you're the expert on that rather than me. Um, how is that structured? What do you get out of that? Um, how how um, do people articulate what their need is? Is there a need for encouragement? Is it for challenge? Is it for accountability? We've talked about some of these right. kinds of things before. I think that one of the big things in mastermind style groups that I think is most powerful is simply role modeling. Mm -hmm. Hanging around with other people who are just a little further along than you are doing the kind of thing that you're doing. But I think it's so helpful to say, I'm a novice, you're an expert. Could we hang out so that I could learn from uh -huh. your experience and not have to make all those mistakes all by myself, right? And yeah. so we think about those mentoring relationships and how helpful and fruitful they'll, they'll be. So again, what kind of group do you need? Um, what, what will uh, help you take you wherever you are right now to the next level? And do you need a group? Do you need an individual? Is there three people who might get together? And how can you articulate really what's the goal there and how can you best meet it? Well, your statement on role modeling is interesting because as I look at communities, I'm gonna, and I'm going to call them online communities because that's what a lot of people are most involved in these days, online communities, whether it's a a, a mastermind group of, of five or 50, and there's all numbers out there, or whether it's an online community of, of 500 or whatever it may be, that at the, I've done a lot of polling of people and the value that they find. I'm going to, I hadn't thought about it as far as role modeling, but when you put that in with role modeling, mentoring, you know, commiserating with each other, understanding that is the primary value. I would put that as say that is top of the list value that people cite getting from it as time goes on. And yet I think it's very hard to sell that at face value on the front end, because people want that yeah. tangible thing, join this group, and we'll help you 10 times your income. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that is the that's going to sell more than, than just about anything, or we're going to help you network and find new connections. We want that tangible takeaway. And it was a friend of mine, Tommy Breedlove, I had him on the show. And he said, and he was speaking, he does, he works only with men. He says, men generally come to these groups, because they want more uh, power and success. Uh, powers. I know it's a difficult word, but he says, really, it comes down. That's what they right. generally want. But then at the end of the day, what do they get the most value out of and, and, and testify to is relationships. Yes, um, absolutely. And in, in one of these things you talked about, you know, the accountability, I think you've said that mm -hmm. in this session as well, accountability. And I wanted to ask about that because the way that you showcased it in the book, I felt gave it more palatable bit palatability. Can I say, is that a word <laughs> made it more palatable? How's that? And then accountability, because accountability has a lot of baggage on it, especially if you come from a faith-based, you know, group, sometimes it's on there and it's, you know, it's holding your feet to the fire and right. people at face value don't tend to like that myself in included, but you, you spoke to it more into expectation of right. having that expectation. You said that of showing up that these guys knew that I'm going to have to come and they're going to ask me, so what do you got new? What are you going to read? Yeah, and the, the, so call it accountability or, or take that off. If that bothers anyone listening. And you said, it's just the expectation right. of something that doesn't need to feel bad. That's a, should be a motivator. Is that. Absolutely. Absolutely. The word accountability just comes with all kinds of baggage, yeah, whether yeah. that's parental or church oriented, um, you know, you're bad, I'm going to make you better, whatever that all that baggage comes with. So I don't like that word in some ways. And yet, every single person listening to us right now knows that they do a little bit better when they have a deadline. Yep. And when there's somebody else who's invested 
in whether or not they do the thing they said that they were going to do. And so yeah. um, anticipation and expectation start with the individual saying, by next week, I hope to have drawn up four plans for this new building or uh, created a list of people we might invite to this event or whatever the thing is. So it starts with the person saying, this is my goal for me, right? Not, yeah. this is what I think you should do. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and then a week later, it's like, say, you said you were going to do that thing. How did that thing go? Simply knowing that tomorrow somebody's going to expect that is going to be hard. This can work in the simplest ways, Kevin. I've seen uh, athletes, I'm sure you've seen this happen too. I know guys who get together uh, and they say, we want to run more every day. We want to be more faithful in terms of getting our miles in. So at the end of the day, they simply text each other how many miles they ran. There's no other talk. There's no other confrontation. There's no meeting. There's no words. Just they send each other a number. How many miles did you run that day? Now, I don't know about you. I'm not a runner, but if I knew at the end of the day, I had to text somebody that I ran four miles or eight miles or six miles, I'd get out. I get my running shoes, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I'd at least get out there because I don't want to be embarrassed. And if I know that my friend is going to probably be posting six to eight miles. I'm not going to give up at mile two. Yeah. Right. So there's that kind of very simple accountability. But I think that the larger concept is I want to, I want to stand on tiptoe in eager anticipation of the thing that you are going to bring forth. We're back to that idea of creating or inventing or problem solving, calling something into existence. Yeah that wasn't there before. And I'm gonna be there going, wow, I'm gonna witness that. I'm gonna expect that. And it's okay if it doesn't happen this week or next week, because part of what happens in these groups when they really work is that, that people say, that's okay. Let's, let's give it another try, right? And they, they're kind of um, committed to hanging in there, not just for the, the day or the week, but the month, right? Or the six months or the three months, whatever period makes sense for the group, but they say, it's okay, we all stumble, but keep going. Let's see what you can come up with next week, right? And then that, that's where that encouragement yeah. comes into play. And as we talked about before, to encourage someone doesn't mean to praise or blame. To encourage someone means to put courage into them. And any form of innovation demands a level of courage that is, I believe, impossible to sustain by ourselves. We're second guessing, we're overthinking, we're beating ourselves up. Maybe it's just me, but I beat myself up that I don't yeah. meet my own expectations. And then to have somebody go, you know what? Yeah, but look what you did accomplish. And I know that you'll be able to do those other eight things too. And when someone believes in me, it's so much easier for me to believe in myself. I want to come to that. But before I do come back to that, I want, I want to hit on your word of anticipation. I really like that in a, in a long side of, so we accountability is used so much as we both said, it's got baggage. So expectation under that. I like that word of anticipation. I'm going to use yeah. that uh, Diana in reference to this of as you shared in the book, they all had the expectation that I'm going to have to come here next week. No, 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 I'm going to have to, I get to that. This is my point. I get to come here next week and I will be expected to share something. Can yeah. we change that to the anticipation of, I am going to get yeah. to share something and come in with that intentionality because I have been in groups and I'll admit Diana, I've had some times of Oh my gosh, I'm not really looking forward to the fact that I've got to show up. And yet it's really the reason I joined anyways. <laughs> it's funny, it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it's going to call us to revisit why I am doing this because by proxy, I'm coming in to create some pressure yeah. in, in a degree, but can we hinge that, hinge that or, or wrap that around the word of you said, that, yeah, I'm going to play with that. I'm going to have to, I'm going to ponder that. I want to wrap that around of not accountability, not even expectation, anticipation. anticipation. That's a hopeful word. It's a very hopeful word. Exactly right. But doesn't it do something in our hearts when yeah. we know somebody, um, it matters to somebody, whether we 
produce or not, whether we're thriving or not, uh, whether we're making it through the tough times or not. When people care about us and the things that matter to us, so much easier for us to take them seriously and to invest, yeah. uh, perhaps even sacrificially, in what it takes uh, to make those those dreams come true. You talked in our first our part one together, and you share it in the book about these guys coming together and sharing there. And the word you use was their rough drafts. Yes, and that hit me, Diana. In it's talking about sharing early that we don't tend, we, me don't tend to do that. <laughs> I want it put together enough yeah. because I really want to make a pitch that sells it yeah. and that everybody says, Oh my gosh, that's the most brilliant thing I've ever heard in my life, Kevin. That's really kind of what I want. And yet that's feeding my ego. If I really want the piece to be good, if I want this creation, this thing I'm bringing into existence to be good, I need to tone that down and be willing to come in, share that rough draft and to share early. But if I do that, one, I've got to be vulnerable enough to do that. Two, I've got to be confident enough to deal with opening myself up for criticism and saying that this is not the finished product. I get that. Is that a great agreement to say too? Okay, if we're going to come in, we got to be gentle with each other a little bit that this is the rough draft. I haven't thought it through. So to come in, you don't just blow it out of the water right away. Uh, help me figure out. Actually, one of the things I, that I did, I've done in the past that I really like the perspective of is we can all get together, share an idea and spend the next 30 minutes just blowing the heck out of why it won't work. Okay. We're not going to do that. We're going to come in and you get 30 minutes. The only thing you can come out with is an idea of how could this work? Yeah. Would that be a fair way to help people? I'm thinking through my, I'm thinking for myself here. What a, uh, maybe that's a great perspective to help people, myself included, to be able to come in with that rough draft that is open. And I don't know a better word to think of other than vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. When we, are willing to open the door to input at the earliest stages of a project, we have the potential to correct the trajectory before things go off the rails. Yeah, okay. When it's, we've in, already invested so much time, so much energy, so much thought, so much worry into it. It's really hard when someone makes a suggestion for us to kind of go back and re go back to the drawing board. We don't like it. We're already too far along in the process. So early is better. Um, it might be helpful for you to think about a technique that I teach my students when they are working in writing groups. So here at the university, my students are in writing groups, groups of usually four um, students who are working on papers of various kinds. And what I teach them to do is a, is a technique I call the preamble. Okay. So the preamble is the students bring their drafts of their research papers or their essays. They bring them to group and the author is the one who speaks first. The author has authority. And that's really important when you're thinking about writing groups. And you can probably translate that for uh, your larger context. But the preamble is where the author explains exactly what kind of feedback they need. So the groups are gonna look at the paper together and the author might say something like, I know that this isn't working, but I can't figure out what's gone wrong. Help me figure out where the problems are. Now that's a very different preamble than a, than a student who might show up and say something like, um, I, I love this. I think that it's really, really good. And I just need somebody to tell me, am I sort of on the way to a good idea or should mm -hmm. I scrap the whole thing? Well, those are two different kinds of feedback. And we need to, I think, be better at asking for what we need at different stages, right? I'll have mm -hmm. students that will show up in my office sometimes during office hours and they'll hand me a paper. They'll say, can you look at my paper? I'm like, great, tell me what you need. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, I need you to bleed red ink over all of it. I wanna know absolutely everything that's wrong. Then I have an, a student right after that who'll say something like, I just wanna know if I'm gonna survive your class. <laughs> Is anything that I've done any good at all? Do I have any good ideas? Can you help me to find the ideas and just reassure me that I'm going to be able to be successful? Yeah. Now, can you imagine me as a teacher trying to teach both of those approaches the same way, right? I could devastate one and not help, not be at all helpful for the other. 
So as we get together and get a little bit better at saying, can you show me the strengths of this? Or can you show me the weaknesses of this? Or can you help me to brainstorm a little bit to flesh this out? Or I have a piece of an idea and I don't know what the implications of it are. Or I have an idea and I don't know if it's practical enough. We learn to ask for what we need. And honestly, I think that we can do that in interpersonal relationships, right? as well as within the business world or the world of our productivity, right? So um, I rearranged the furniture today and my roommate comes home and she says, oh, right? And I say, all I want to do is, all I need right now is for you to say, oh, that's an interesting option. Cause right now I'm tired, I'm ready for dinner. I don't wanna hear any critique. <laughs> Yeah. I just want to hear you say, oh, that's an interesting option. And then tomorrow, when I'm not tired and hungry, let's talk about whether this actually works for us, right? So even as we're relating to one another, we can find ways to ask better for what we need. Do we need a resonator? Do we need praise? Do we need encouragement? Do we need pressure? Do we need correction? Do we need role modeling? Do we need somebody to oppose us? This won't work for these eight reasons. Or do we need somebody who's editing? Yeah. And you remember that editing isn't just for writers. Editing means try this instead. Here's a suggestion. Uh -huh. But I'm not always open to suggestions, are you? I mean, sometimes it's the last thing I need <laughs> in a given yeah. situation. But how do we learn to ask? And how do we understand these different categories? You just read off a list and I saw you looking down at your notes. Is that, <laughs> is that out of a book or are those just your personal teaching notes? No, that's out of Bandersnatch. So is it really? Where, I want to yeah. know where that is. Cause I was, I was going to If you summarize Bandersnatch, uh, the idea of what kind of comments help creatives okay. on their way, the categories are resonating, praising, encouraging, pressuring, modeling, opposing, and editing. Okay, that's great. And each one is a little different. I can, each one has its own little definition, right? Resonating means tell me more about the thing that you have in mind. Praising says this work is good. Encouraging says you have what it takes. Pressuring says finish, don't give up, finish. Modeling says, huh, that's interesting. Here's what worked for me. Opposing is when we just dig deep and we say, you know what? You're on the wrong track. This isn't going to work. And editing says, try this instead. Where is that in the book? I, I, I... It's, it's in, there's a little, it's summarized in the epilogue. In the epilogue but if okay. you think about the table of contents and the chapters, this is the, okay. the bottom line okay. summary of all of the chapters put together. Okay. What strikes me, Diana, is how often, and I'm going to pick on social media, which is, that is a disappointing part of it, that we often reach out, people reach out for counsel guidance, feedback, and they don't get something that's helpful, but they're not also stating what they want. So if somebody, you mentioned even in interpersonal relationships and, you know, opinions, I can I don't know why this came to mind, but the thought of somebody on Facebook saying, Hey, I'm asking some counsel about, Hey, I'm, you know, send, my kids are in public school or I'm sending my kids to public school. And I'm wondering about X, Y, Z that you can absolutely expect within moments, they're going to get somebody who says public school is the devil. And you are a horrific parent for even that's not what they're looking for. And, and I, I see that happen so often, but what it does now, obviously we expect to be in groups of this nature that are invested, that have more tact than that, but how great for our own responsibility and coming forth with something to say, here's my question. And what kind of feedback, uh, it, I am looking for is this, I'm not looking for your feedback. I, I know for myself, a lot of times I'm not looking for somebody to tell me whether they think it's that, that my endeavor is possible or not. Right. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go after and bring this into existence. And there's nobody that can talk me out of it. So just take that out of the, off the table and right. help me figure out this aspect of what I'm looking for. Yes. I may be asking to say, I'm not looking 
at your input on whether you think it's possible, but if I'm going to do this anyways, how do you think I could best market this sure. to a certain demographic? So it brings a responsibility. And, and, and I would say, as you were talking about, I'm thinking that gives me that negates some of the vulnerability of what I might get of saying, look, I'm, I'm not looking for these feedbacks over here. Don't waste my time or frustrate me with those. Here is where I'm open to feedback that that helps on all fronts. Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. The culmination of this book for me, Diana, I think I mentioned it in the first one is, and you mentioned it just a minute ago, you, you in the term or the definition you gave of encourage, putting courage into them that so much of this was spurring each other on. And I hit on that or it resonated with me when you talked about CS Lewis saying you can do more or you can do better tolerance. It was one of those, maybe both. And that was spurring, spurring him on that. That's a big part of this was spurring each other on, not just platitudes and not just saying, Oh, Hey, that sounds great. But saying that's, that's good. And I think you could do more and sparring, spurring and sparring is what came out of me. And then saying it, gosh, it, but being invested enough to do that. I am concerned that that is not happening when we talk about, and I'm using the term mastermind because I don't know of a more relatable term in today's day and age for what you're talking about in your book, Banner Snatch, that the Inklings did. I'm concerned that that is not really happening to a deep enough level where we're really spurring and sparring. We may be doing some role modeling. Let's go back to that. We may be doing that well, giving some encouragement and some advice and some counsel, but are we getting deep enough? I don't feel like we are in general. And that's the beauty of what you pulled out. And it's not, I guess I, I get the point you wrote a book about it is it is, it is so uncommon. This is a very unique thing that they did, which is why you wrote a book about it. <laughs> uh, but is that, is that a fair, you know, the spurring and sparring a fair uh, takeaway of what we need to be doing if we're going to get the value these guys did? Sure. So the, the, uh, the goal of collaborating is to bring out the best in each other. That's what we're after, to bring out the best in each other. In order to do that, I need to spend enough time with you to know what your best is, right? I need to see you in oh. informal and informal situations to know you can do better, or you've got more in you, or this isn't all you've got to offer, right? I need to know about you and I need to care about you in order to bring out those things um, that will help to bring out the best in you. I always tell my mm. students when they're working with their writing groups or with other kinds of critique groups, probably uh, would apply to mastermind groups as well, that there's one infallible sign of a healthy group. And that's that after the group is over, you can't wait to get back on uh, to your project. You can't wait to get back on track. You feel mm -hmm. energized. You feel refreshed. You feel equipped in a way that you weren't before. So it, it's funny though. I, I love that you mentioned that sometimes you have to sort of drag yourself to get to this meeting, right? There's this resistance to doing it, but if you've got a healthy group, then you leave the group feeling better than you ever have before, feeling more mm -hmm. possibility than you ever knew before, feeling like you're not alone in the fight, feeling like you've got what it takes to take the next step and feeling like you've got a safety net of folks there who are gonna care whether or not you succeed or not. I don't know of a better way to encapsulate our talk than that right there. And I just am so, it's the reason I pulled you on here uh, requested your uh, attendance. I wanted to learn one and I literally have taken notes and <laughs> will be using it to craft uh, what I'm doing with, with a, a so-called mastermind uh, group, but there you laid out the desire. This is really going to help. I hope helps everybody's positioning of how you're going to showcase what needs to happen in a mastermind group to do that, to get the best out of uh, each other. I I'm a fan of your work, Diana. Thank you for being here. I can't 
imagine I'm not going to have continued questions and I may need to call you back on one of these again, do a follow-up, maybe a Q and a even would actually be great. Oh, that uh, would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. I'd love to do that. Well, it's just such, I just, I want to encourage you. I think you know this, but I'm saying out here in this world, I am, which is primarily a business and personal development world that we are in more need of this. People's isolation is killing them. It's hurting me, my own isolation, even though I feel like I'm more connected than most people. And I want this kind of a kind of a group spurring and inspiring me to be the best that I can, but it's going to require me to invest in others to do that. And I've got to trust that investment in somebody else that I will get a return on investment. Yes, and that's that's okay. what we're all concerned about. So when we think about somebody like a C.S. Lewis or a J.R.R. Tolkien, we think about what they accomplished in their life. We say they were geniuses and they really, really did a lot. But what the members of the group said, what Lewis said and what Tolkien said, if it hadn't been for the other, they never would have accomplished what they did. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're the same right? We're the same. We need each other and we need to get better in very, very specific and practical ways of continuing to help and to support and to challenge one another to bring out the best in each other. Diana, thank you again for a second time. I am already looking forward. I am anticipating our next time together. <laughs> thank Sounds you for being good. here. Thank you for the work you've done to bring this to us. Thank you so very much, Kevin. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. That was, uh, that was fun. And I'm smiling because I know some people specifically who are going to adore this talk, uh, <laughs> because it, it is, I have so many people involved in masterminds who are in, uh, participants or leaders. And I think the need is, is so dire, but I see a lot of people, I see a lot of attrition mm -hmm. and I'm concerned it's because they're missing what you showcase in the book. So, awesome. Very, very good. Um, would you be open? And, and I, I got to see, I'm not even sure when we're publishing this. I'll, we'll let you know. Uh, but on a, I, I think on a Q and A and I, I may even, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play with this. I, I, I really want to elevate this and, and promote it a lot uh, just to help folks involved. Uh, even some leaders I've got, uh, I've got three guys in particular who are leading mastermind groups with good success that are going to eat this alive, I think, because they really do want to do well for the people involved and for themselves. Right. Um, so if I can have your permission, I may follow up with an idea uh, that will also help pr you know, promote the book and give you more exposure too. All right. Hey, it sounds good. I look forward to continuing our conversation. Okay. Uh, yeah, as uh, as time goes by. Okay. Thank you uh, so much, Diana. And I will. I'll be on in touch next on just when we publish this. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Do you have a Do you have an estimate of when things might might come out? Well, I think I don't have the calendar in front of me. Let me let me think because I I just I just want it out quick enough. Um, I may bump some things. I may, I may see if we can bump. We've got a, a long list and it takes it way out, but I'm selfishly too thinking, uh, cause I'm going to be launching my own, um, mastermind group that I'd like to do it in conjunction with that. So I'm going to see if we can do it yet in November, uh, okay. and the way that I do it, it'll drop on a Monday part one, and I'll drop the part two, the following Monday. And so this, this next Monday, I think I have a new one. Let me, let me look at my calendar. Um, this Monday, I think I've got a new one set. That's the first, and it would probably be the eight that they're their second one. So maybe the 15th, let me see if I can do that. Let me see if I can do what would that be? November 15th, November 15th. Tell everybody to get all their, all their friends bandersnatch for Christmas. <laughs> How's that? 
that would make me pretty happy. I would kind of like that. And let me, um, I'm going to try on my blog to put those uh, resonator praising, encouraging, pressuring, and the key phrase for each one. I'm going to try to throw that up on the blog so that that's there uh, also for people to uh, to read and to to benefit from. It, it, that'd be great because I, I am going to do that. I'll do that as part of the and guidelines is not my favorite word, but you know, kind of the structure of, Hey, you're, I want you to anticipate coming and sharing what you're doing, what you've been working on over the next week, but tell us what kind of feedback you want. And here is here, here's Diana's, you know, list. <laughs> and if I, you know, I'm maybe I'll look at that and see if there's anything in relation to any other business directives outside of authoring whatnot, that if I want to add something to that, but still say, you know, this is, uh, I want you to come and tell us the kind of feed feedback you want and give them some idea joggers at the least. I really yeah. like that perspective. Yeah, very, very good. I think it'll, I think it will help. Uh, I think we, <laughs> we get what we want when we ask for what we want or when people know what we want. And yet we're not very good at articulating what that is. I think sometimes we don't know. Uh, and, uh, and so this list can help. So I, I agreed. And, and the ask the reality that we don't know, requires us to be more intentional, which I think, again, will help everybody around. I think I asked this last time, uh, but I'm not actually seeing a note on it. The primary call to action that you want is to just have people get the book. And do you want it from their website as opposed to from your website or as opposed to Amazon? Or? Amazon's great. Just to order it straight on Amazon. But your, um, web, your website is where? Dianaglier.com. Oops. Well, and that's where they can, like you just mentioned your blog. There's a blog. It's not very active, um, you know, and it's not a website that I'm very proud of, to be honest. I haven't found the ideal web designer. I'm still looking for her. <laughs> so if you know somebody who's great at that, um, but uh, yeah, they, that's a, a way to get in touch or a way to kind of see what my speaking schedule is uh, to get links to some of my other talks and so forth. Uh, I'm signing up for your, e your uh, email list right now. Uh, oh. When you say that the website is not there, do you have an idea or an example of something you like better? Because I do have people, but they're not apples to apples as far as what they do so do you have when you say that you just want it better or do you have a specific idea of what you would like enhanced i need somebody who can help me um kind of take my branding to the next level and that would include um the work on the design and the usefulness of the website and i haven't found that person yet who gets who i am and what i do and uh, has those skills um I, if you're okay, I will, I'll look at your website and come back to you, Great. Diana. Um, there, there's some aspects that I just had a, a coaching client of my own sign on today to do that very similar thing uh, myself, but I've got questions to ask before that, because when you look at, I would, I need to know, I'll, I'll send an email, need to know a little bit more about your goals and about what you're doing with this, because I, I know some incredible people in the branding positioning arena who um, are far more skilled in some certain areas than, than I am. So um, sure. I'll send you those. And, and I don't know if, depending on your answer, if I would vote myself as a, as a decent resource, but if not, I know if, um, I know people to, to varying depths and degrees and directions uh, in that space. So I'd be, I'd be honored to help you with whatever resource uh, on that. So I'll, I'll send an email with some questions. Great. I love that practical help. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm, I enjoy connecting people uh, Great. Very, very much. So especially people with a message that I want to see reach as many as possible or reach the right people, both. <laughs> awesome. It's really been so much fun. I don't know if you're ever in LA, we should do lunch uh, sometime if you're ever out here. And I get to Colorado usually two or three times a year. I'm usually headed to the Denver area, sometimes down to the Springs. Um, are you, you're north, are you north of Denver, east? I, I'm right outside of the Springs. Okay. All right. 
if you're, I mean, we've got, I've got a kid that goes to school every day in the spring. So we're, we're about 15 miles from the bottom, the base of the mountain. Um, but we do at this point with, with kids, we're down there, uh, quite a bit. Oh, I'd be, it'd be great. I have a lot of people. I mean, obviously Colorado is a destination place. So when they, uh, come in the area, I'll drive, I'm, I'm actually heading up to Boulder cause my brother's in town. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm eager to drive cause, uh, yeah, I'm not in a big city. I don't, uh, see a lot of the folks that I am associated with face to face. So if I get the opportunity, be great, please uh, let me know. And I will likewise, if I'm out in that direction, which could, that could have probably not till probably not till Q1 of next year though. All right. Well, I was, I spent the month of June in Castle Rock. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why? Um, I was actually, I was on a personal retreat. So oh, wow. we had been, um, uh, uh, doing online education, you know, all my teaching was online and we had pretty rigid restrictions here because of the quarantine yeah. and COVID and all that. And I was just having a really hard time struggling with all of that isolation, kind of mm -hmm. like what we talked about. And also my daughter was getting ready to move out and, and go to college. And uh -huh. so it was a, a hinge time, you know, yeah. it was a time of transition coming out of quarantine back into the classroom it was a time of having raised her up now she's 19 and she's out of the house yeah. and just thinking about um what is next for me what's this next season of life look like i thought i'd go on a three and a half week retreat wow. where i didn't plan anything i wow. just got up each day to read and pray to think to walk and then do, you know, just basically as the spirit led on a daily basis, uh, whether that was maybe get together for dinner with friends or, you know, go visit a, a site that I'd wanted to see or take a nap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Understood. <laughs> what would that be like? I just, I, I, I dreamed a dream of what a vacation would look like when I simply took each day as it came yeah. and entered into all that that day held and it was very healing for me it was a very good time that's great testimony to hear as you mentioned in the show that some of us benefit from more solitude uh, than others i have grown into that really embraced it in the past few years of how much that benefits me and i've got a big family i've still got five kids at home and awesome. uh, often uh, you know, another one will come in for a while and, um, and I take getaways, I'll take four or five days, solo getaways that I've gotten to be just giddy, uh, yeah. about it, it gets so much out of those for all the reasons that you just said, I, I think it's a benefit to anyone, but mm -hmm. maybe more so those of us who, uh, who really get more fuel from that. And it's a great, I like your you know, uh, adding that into our need for the collaboration as well. Um, boy, it reminds me of a, I was going to ask a question on that, that I didn't get in there. Well, there you go. I've already got something for the next time. Okay. Okay. Castle Rock's about an hour from that. Okay. All yeah. right. Good. Not far at all. So yeah, really, if you're ever out here, I'm, I'm, it's, uh, for me, it's also a fun reason to take off and I'll go to, I mountain bike and run a lot trails. And so I can hit those as well. Fantastic. Um, okay. Well, I've got your, obviously your personal email. I'll be in touch with you there. I'll ask you some questions. I'll look at your website, maybe um, tomorrow. I may have a chance and ask you some questions. And if I can offer a resource there, but then I'll look at the calendar as well and see when we're going to post this. And yeah, I really do. I'm going to think through an idea that's been run around a little bit on how to take this even further with these mastermind groups. I think people could benefit so much. Yeah. I'll come at you with some ideas. I love it. Thanks. Keep in okay. touch and take good care. Have a great day. Thank you, Diana. You too. Bye-bye.